so our penultimate topic here before our Mandalorian Season 2 review, spoiler review coming up. So that's your final warning before the, uh, you know, if you're trying to avoid any sort of spoilers for Mandalorian, this is the final warning. We're getting into our final topic prior to that. And it, uh, it taken us through the video game world where um, recently, this, this past year, Square Enix came out with their Avengers game. And articles came out showing that apparently the film has lost the company over about $63 million, uh, which is a, that's a pretty big number for a video game. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. like, normally, too, gaming being a uh, video game is being, like, the, uh, I don't know, it's, it's the biggest industry right now as far as profits. Because sure. video games in the last, like, uh, decade has uh, you know, toppled the music industry and the movies and music industry. And music industry at one point was, like, the biggest. And, I don't know, the kind of just always dance with... Uh, you know, Hollywood and the music industry. But uh, video games has just soared past it being, like, literally the most profitable uh, just industry in general, uh, as far as media goes, in the last decade. So this is a pretty big deal, especially with a title like uh, The Avengers. There was a lot of hype around this game. And uh, it's kind of surprising to see that uh, it accumulated this much of a loss, right? And I know, John, you, you, you've played it more than I have. I've only gone through, like, the first little bit of it. So, I mean, I'm probably the culprit one of the reasons behind <laughs> it i mean i have the game though so i will say that like i do have it so yeah i don't know but what uh what are your thoughts on this john of uh, having uh having played more of it than i have you think this is uh expected or um I, I'm, I'm torn I, I part of me is really disappointed to see this just from a fan perspective i i personally like the game um i don't think i think one of the issues with the game is that it 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 was built up, I think, to be more than it ever could have achieved. Um, I think people were going in where it was being presented to people as this um, live service game where you'd be able to go in and explore the Marvel Universe and and level up your characters and, and play in a wide variety of locales and against, you know, a fully living Marvel world, a uh, fully living Marvel Earth, and maybe not Marvel Universe, but at least a, a Marvel world, and and that just didn't happen. I mean, you ha you have a, a select few characters to choose from, and you've got very kind of um, just very normal run of the mill missions that you have to kind of run on repeat. And so there is some some boredom, some some blandness that seeps into the game. But I think it's a, still a fun game. It's the, the the characters that you can play are, are are the main ones. You've got Black Widow, you've got Iron Man, you've got Thor, you've got Hulk, you've got Kamala Khan, and you've got Cap. And and those six characters are are fun. They all feel good to play, especially once you get them leveled up. Um, but again, the game I think was was kind of promoted, or people expected it to be more than it ever what was going to be and ever could have been. And I think that was, you know, managing those expectations going into it was a problem. And then it just had a poor release. It released with a ton of bugs mm -hmm. that they're still trying to patch out of it. And it, it, and with, with, you really get one shot with people to make an impression. You get one shot to get people to, to buy into the game and to, and to create that buzz and word of mouth that you need. And, and this game just was never able to do that. It was never able to capture the imagination of gamers, never able to capture the, the attention of the comic book community. So it just, it kind of just played middle of the road everywhere. And, and, and so it's not terribly surprising. It's just more disappointing. I think for me. I'm with you. Cause I know, uh, it, not that I like bonded, the uh, kind of like, expecting more by any means but i guess in the end like i did expect more because when i did when i just i haven't played through much of it at all but it's very just kind of a linear story like it's as far as gameplay mm -hmm. goes and i think like you're right that like people probably wanted more of a sandboxy kind of thing mm -hmm. is what, what i would guess from it uh and you do have even though those six characters are like good and they all feel pretty fun to play um it's such a small like cast of characters that you can actually play. And then like the, the upgrades for them all feel kind of just like run of the mill. There's not a whole mm -hmm. lot of customization that goes into it. And uh, 
I think that uh, is probably like what hurt it most, in all honesty. And then, like you said too, like the uh, there's really not like a big like there's not much to do like end game wise. It almost feels like one of those games where once you beat it, you just kind of beat it, and then you can just run those same like missions like kind of over and over and over again, and it gets very kind of slow and and dull I after mean, a while. I mean, the whole point of it, you know, I my my biggest experience with a, a persistent live game like this was destiny and destiny had a lot of the same issues when it first launched with repetitiveness doing the same missions over and over but the one thing that destiny had going for it that this game i think i feel lacks in a certain way is that chase for gear Mm -hmm. avengers has the chase for gear there's certainly different types of gear that you can get that are better than others and, and things that make you feel more powerful or have more more bonus stats to them that you want they're unique Um, but they split the cosmetic look of gear away from the actual functionality of the gear. And I think that actually hurts the game because, um, there's, there's nothing to show off. Like if you get a really cool shield for cap, there's no visual cue to anybody that, you know, this is a live game that you're supposed to be playing with other players. And one of the cool things is, Hey, look at this awesome thing. I, this awesome piece of gear I picked up. Well, nobody can tell because unless you buy a different skin, but then you're just paying out your own money to have it look different. That doesn't it doesn't reflect the grind that you've gone through or, or give you that sense of achievement that you get um, with a game like Destiny or other online persistent games like that. So, you know, 100%. I think that was that was the biggest thing that uh, I didn't like about it at first when the, when I first saw that they were doing that. Like the gear is, it, it, there's nothing cosmetic to it at all. Like the gear piece is attached to you, and then if you want a different appearance, it's it's just a skin. So like yeah, yeah it, it's a big pain because that's at least with like Destiny because like like I play World of Warcraft primarily, right? And like you mm-hmm. can go in and like your gear like matters as far as leveling it up and everything. But they, they have, I mean over the last like couple of years and everything, they have a transmog system. So you can make your gear look like whatever you want it to look as long as you've collected the piece in the past. Right. So you can go get like, you can go get the biggest and baddest stuff from the, you know, the most current raid or whatever, and you can just have it look like that, or you can change it to whatever the hell you want it to look like. If you've collected the appearance, which is good and bad because like, like a lot of people are kind of like, don't like that system just because Kind of like you said, when you go and get that big chase piece of gear that you're looking for, when you equip it, everybody knows like You've what you did thing. to get it. Yeah, yep. so that you can still kind of get that at least in WoW because like if you want to do that, you can just give it that appearance, assuming assuming you have it. But back before transmog, like it was a much better like visual representation when you go to like a, a major city. And wow, like back in the day, like you saw the dude in like that full raid tier set, and you're like, dude, like that's gonna be me one day. Yeah, like he did some shit, and like, and you're, and it's you hype for like, you're just like, I want to do that. Like that's gonna be me one day. And like with this, y'all just look the same. (laughs) Yep. Like you get like nothing out of it. Like, and I, you know, I think the mission there is there was an issue with mission variety and having things. Having having new stuff to to do for the for the players, but being a being a Destiny a major Destiny one player, I mean that was a that was a problem with Destiny one too, and it took time for them to figure out how to diversify that. And it's arguable that Destiny has never you know been been the model of how to diversify under the you know their missions types and stuff. So um, you know I, I feel like that, but I also feel like it's got to be hard. It's got to be hard to create a game now. Like I, I, I hope one day maybe I get into WoW and I'm able to to see like how they how they diversify mission types and how they keep people um, coming back and, and running stuff because it's got to be hard to do. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, definitely uh, with with games especially like have been like running for like as long as like WoW has. I mean, like 15 years. So it's definitely more of the same in a lot of cases but they they definitely do a lot to like keep things fresh in a lot of ways Uh, like like anything though like kind of like with destiny it's like in the end you're playing a first person shooter so no matter what that's what you're going to be doing so if you get bored of that then you're you're destiny's not going to be any different you're going to get bored of it right like it's the same kind of thing and then with 
that's like kind of one thing that I don't know with the style game of Avengers, kind of just like the it's almost just like a hack and slash beat 'em up kind of game at its core, yep. you know. So you like you play it, that's what it seems like. Yeah, so I mean, and it's definitely one of those games that like or one of those game styles that can get it, it gets tiring after a while, you know, you just doing the same thing over and over over again. There's not a whole lot of diversity you can really have with that kind of gameplay in the end. So I, I, I think the live service portion of the game is what really like did hurt it because it's really not designed to be that kind of game. And I guess they could have made it that way, but they would have had to change up how a lot of it, I don't know, just this is in order for them to do it. So I don't know. I don't know if it's really the best. I don't really know if the live service for games is really the best format for any kind of game in all honesty like unless it's like an mmo that's the only thing it's like really been a tried and true thing for with like a acting like rpg wise in my opinion yeah but i don't know rick is someone who like doesn't have it just hearing us and like talk about it and hearing that it's lost 63 million dollars encourage you to actually even buy it or play the game <laughs> no See? there you have no. it. yeah yeah, as somebody now I have seeing I have from, heard. Oh, sorry. Go no, ahead. I was just gonna say, as somebody seeing in from the outside, no, to yeah. answer your question, right? No, which I've is heard, I think I've that's probably not a good thing. Yeah, I've heard that they're going to try and relaunch it, and I'm guessing that's going to happen when they have the Series X and the PlayStation Five versions ready to go. That they'll try and maybe rebrand it or come out with a new expansion pack and relaunch the game. Yeah. Um, because I mean, they you know it may have lost sixty three million, but I'm sure they have quite a bit more of that put into the development of it. So, you know, maybe yeah. maybe they feel like there's some money to recoup there and cut, maybe even break even at some point. Yeah, I know. The only other thing too that like I'm not the biggest fan of with it is that they have like the uh, like Spider Man is going to be a Sony exclusive character, which makes sense because Sony owns Spider Man. Like, so I get that sure. portion of it. But that only is going to hurt the game, in my opinion. Yeah. Like, that, like stuff like that. I mean, at the same time, like, what is... I mean, X, Microsoft doesn't own any Marvel characters, so they don't have as much pool in order to, like, get an exclusive character for them. But, like, Spider-Man being available would help the game in general, but when it's only going to be able to now be on the, the Sony, you know, the PS4 or 5, you're cutting your, your player base and at best in a third like so i don't know well and if you're if you're a, if you're a pc or an xbox gamer and you're trying to decide like hey look there's a the new systems coming out this fall there's cyberpunk coming out this fall there's the sports games coming out this fall and there's marvel avengers coming out this fall you know what I'm, marvel avengers i'm not going to be able to play spider-man because it's exclusive and you mm -hmm. know i'm a big spider-man fan so you know what? I'm just I'm not going to worry about that game. I'm going to go with one of these other many options that I have this fall instead of, you know, sticking putting my time and money into that. So yeah, yeah I definitely think it hurts it. Definitely hurts it. And I and that's the other thing too is that with it being already such like a small cast of characters, making some of them it, it'll probably more than likely only be Spider Man. But in the end, like Spider Man's like one of the biggest Marvel characters in general, one of the most beloved superhero characters in general. So it's not really the best one to have only be available on one platform, but. And, and you got to think too, you also have to realize that people on Xbox and PC, I mean, not literally, but they're, they're kind of starved for Spider-Man. They've been hearing how good Spider-Man on PS4 was for the past two years. And even though it's not the, that, that particular game, it is the ability to place it as Spider-Man web swing around. Right. And, and, you know, people that are fans probably wanted that opportunity to have it pulled out from under them like that and made exclusive probably was pretty well, especially pretty too, left, left a bad taste in people's mouth. Think of the people like, uh, like in my position who like normally, uh, not, I guess not, not the best example, but there's plenty of people just because I didn't buy the most recent uh, Xbox. Like I, I haven't, I didn't buy that, but Xbox one, I didn't buy. But prior to that, I've always primarily played games on PC, but I always had an Xbox and a, and a PlayStation and a, the most recent, you know, Nintendo. I've had all of them, right? Because I play video games, like, you know what I mean? So, like, think about those people, though, to where, like, in my situation, I already have it on PC. I'm not going to buy it, like, just to play a Spider-Man. Like, no. Yeah. Like, because, it, it, like, I'm, I'm going to hopefully, if I can ever get one, get a PS5. 
hopefully if they ever become available again, I'm kind of in the same position with the new <laughs> graphics card. They're just not there, so I can't do anything about it. But like, I'm not gonna buy like another ver copy of the game just so I can play it. Play it on the PS5. Like that's ridiculous. Like I'm not that's gonna stupid. do that. Like that's and that's that's just a, a shitty situation, really. Like if you got it on Xbox and like you were looking forward to potentially these new characters coming in, like you can't get. Like, and it's like unless you buy a PS5 and then you can get like it's it's not worth it. It's not worth it at yeah. all. Like I don't know. But the question is, guys, what do you think about all this? Do you find it uh, kind of like us? Do you see that it's like not really you know it doesn't come as too big of a shock? Despite how uh, I don't know the game kind of like came out and had its issues and everything. Like I I, I didn't expect it to lose like at least this much money. It was a pretty substantial amount of money. So. I don't know. Let us know what you guys think. If that's expected, you know, did you expect more? Did you expect to be doing better? And what do you think of uh, like Spider-Man being a, PS a PlayStation uh, exclusive character? You think it's gonna hurt it, uh, or you know, do you think it's? Not do you think that it's already at a loss that it's probably not even gonna matter at this point? You think anyone's even you know, any more interested in buying it with or without Spider-Man? Let us know what you think down in the comment section below. <laughs>